Today we're going to answer the question, which is better, credit versus debit spreads? By the end of this video, you will know when is the right time to use a debit and a credit spread for the best cash flow and returns. I'm Randy Perez. I'm a 21 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. If you're already a member of our community, thank you for setting aside a part of your day to be here. If you're not already a member of this community, go ahead and click that subscribe button and bell notification. You'll be joining a community of traders and investors that are helping each other become more knowledgeable and profitable. Debit versus credit spreads is a subject I've been asked about for quite a while. And I appreciate your patience in making this video to answer that question. Today we answer the age old question, which is better, credit or debit spreads? What is your favorite way to trade options? Is it to use credit spreads or debit spreads, or is it using both of them? In the comments below, let me know what your favorite way is to trade options. And stay tuned in until the end of this video where I will share with you what my absolute favorite way is to trade options and where you can find out exactly how much we are making trading options every month. My favorite way to trade options is a technique that you can use to put awesome cash flow into your pocket every single month. First, I want to give you a real brief overview of the difference between a debit and a credit spread. Let's look at this from the standpoint of our expected market direction. As you can see here, if we expect the market to go up and we want to buy a debit spread, then we will buy a call option with a lower strike price and sell a call option at a higher strike price. If we want to do a credit spread, then we will sell a put option at a higher strike price and buy a put option to cover it at a lower strike price. On the other hand, if we think that the market is going to decline and we want to do a debit spread, then we would buy a put option at a higher strike price and sell a put option at a lower strike price. Or if we wanted to do this for a credit, then we would sell a call option at a lower strike price and buy a call option to cover it at a higher strike price. Typically, Option traders do these spreads with a weekly or monthly expiration. They can be done on longer term options, such as leap options if you choose to do so. If you'd like to see how I do debit spreads using leap options, check out the video in the link above and the description below when you're finished watching this video. When is the right time to use a debit spread and a credit spread? The textbook answer is when implied volatility is high in a stock, it's typically better to use a credit spread or to sell premium. The reason is because you're selling option premium, which is a type of insurance when people want or need it the most. For example, how much would you be willing to pay for an insurance policy on your house or your personal belongings when everything's going great? Well, you definitely wouldn't overpay for that insurance policy, would you? Of course not. But what if your house or apartment or your belongings were on fire? How much would you pay for insurance then? I guarantee you'd be willing to pay more for that insurance to cover your house and your personal belongings if they were on fire than you would if it was a beautiful, sunny, bright day outside. The same is true in options. When there's a lot of volatility in a stock or in the overall market, options are more expensive. Think about the other side of that example of your personal belongings and house being on fire. If you were selling insurance, wouldn't you charge more for insurance if a house was on fire? Of course you would. As a matter of fact, in the real world, you can't get insurance on a property or on personal belongings that are on fire if the insurance company knows about it. So the point is that it's better to sell insurance when people are willing to pay more for it. A standard rule of thumb that many people use is that they like to sell options when implied volatility is over 50%. Now for the sake of this video, I'm not going to give my personal opinion until the very end. And again, that opinion will be exactly what I just called it, my personal opinion. That's one of the greatest things about options. You can tailor them to your personality and what you want to get out of them and your level of experience. Let's take a look at an example of two stocks that are trading right about the same price and compare their volatilities as well as the price of their options to determine if it would be better to do a debit or credit option spread on them. Let's first look at Traveler's Company. As you can see here in the top left corner, Travelers Insurance Company is currently trading at $107.82 per share. The company we're going to compare it against, you all have heard of it, it's Apple. As you can see here in the top left corner, Apple is trading within 40 cents of what Travelers is trading at. Apple is at $108.22. 
Let's now take a look at each one of the charts to see which one we think has the most volatility. Here you see the chart for Traveler's Company. It is the more traditional type of company, an insurance company. Their stock price has actually been declining if you consider this time frame, which is the past 15 months. During this time, Travelers went from about $155 per share down to where it is today at $108 per share. Now let's look at the chart of Apple stock. Apple has performed the complete opposite as Travelers. It has gone from $48 per share in the past 15 months and now it's at $108 per share. But when you look at the percentages, Travelers has gone down in value approximately 30%, while Apple has increased in value over 100%. Now focus on what has happened recently in these two companies. Travelers has gone from $120 per share down to $108 per share. That's a 10% decline. Apple has gone from a high of $138 per share down to $108. So Apple has declined about 22% over the past 30 days. Which stock do you think has more volatility priced into its options right now? Here we see that Traveler's Historic and Implied Volatility are both pretty stable at about 24 and 34. If we look at the $105 monthly options that expire in about three weeks, we see that for Traveler's, the implied volatility at this exact moment is 32.78%. That option is currently trading for, as you can see in the blue rectangle, approximately $2.20 per share. On the other hand, let's take a look at Apple's volatility. Here you see that Apple's volatility, historic and implied, is 47 and 55, and it has been increasing over the past five months. So even though Apple is pretty much trading at the exact same stock price, notice at the bottom right corner in the blue rectangle that the implied volatility of that same $105 strike put option, it has an implied volatility of just over 50%. As such, we would expect the $105 put option in Apple to cost more than the $105 put option in Travelers. And that's exactly what we find. Notice here in the blue rectangle, the exact same strike price of $105 in Apple, it's trading at $3.80 per share. So Apple's put option costs 73% more than the exact same strike price put in Travelers, even though the two stocks are trading right about the exact same price. This is the reason that some option traders choose to sell premium when volatility in stock is over 50%. As you can see, you get paid more for that volatility. And this is definitely a good argument for that. In fact, selling put options in stocks that have recently declined is one of the strategies that I implement on my trades. I don't do a whole lot of spread trading anymore, but I do a lot of option selling. And when it comes to entering a new position, I like to sell options after the stock has declined. Let me show you in another example how volatility can greatly affect the price of an option. Here you see an option that I actually sold and I'm still in this position. I sold this January 2022 $150 leap call option back in March 18th of this year. At that time, Disney was trading around $80 per share. Notice the value of this option on March 18th. It was selling for around $5.70 per share. Fast forward almost two months to May and Disney has increased in price from $80 per share up to $110 per share. So Disney stock has gone up 37.5%. How much has that call option I sold increased in value? On May 15th, that option was selling for on average $6.32. Why did the option only go up 62 cents or 10.9% in value? Part of it is because of Delta. But another large part of it is because on March 18th, volatility was sky high. Over the next two months, volatility began to come down some. That's why even though the stock was up 37.5%, this call option had only increased 10.9% because it had lost some of its value because volatility had declined. Let me give you an even more recent example here in Intel. Back on July 24th, Intel came out with some bad news. The stock plummeted from $60 per share down to $50 per share. Let's take a look at the January 2021 $47 put option to see how this drop in stock price affected the value of that option. As you can see, just before the bad news came out, this option was trading around $1.22 per share. Overnight, the value of this option went up to $3.48. Now, two months later, Intel was still trading at about the exact same price, but notice that the value of this option has actually decreased by 19%. It went from $3.48 back in July down to what is currently trading at $2.82. You might say that part of this is because of time decay, and I would agree with you. 
but part of this is also due to the decrease in volatility in Intel. As a matter of fact, during this time, the overall market has seen a sharp decline. But in spite of that, back on July 24th, there was so much volatility already priced into the value of this option at $3.48 per share that there was tons of room for that volatility to dissipate. And that's what happened over the past couple months. This is why it's best to sell options when volatility is high. Here you see that's exactly what I did with Intel. In the blue rectangle, you see a couple of trades I did in Intel as a result of the large drop in stock price coupled with the increase in volatility that was priced into the put options. Selling put options in a stock that has experienced a sharp decline is something you want to be careful with. I like to wait until the downward momentum of the stock's price slows its decline or actually stops. If you'd like more information on exactly how I do that, I encourage you to check out the video series I've made on how to trade options like a pro. The link is above and in the description below if you want to check it out after this video. As I mentioned, it's important to wait until the down momentum of the stock begins to subside. That's why I did not sell options on the day that the big drop started, July 24th. I actually waited about a week later when I saw that the down momentum of the stock was declining. Volatility was still high, so there was still plenty of fear about what might happen to the stock, but the interest in selling it was starting to diminish. And of course, you can easily turn any of these positions into a spread by, if you're selling a put option because you expect the stock to increase, then you would buy a put option at a lower strike price with the exact same expiration date to cover the one you're selling. Conversely, if you are selling a call option because you think the stock is going to decline, then you would buy a call option at a higher strike price with the exact same expiration date to cover the short call option you sold. When you sell options, you're selling insurance. By buying an option farther out of the money from the one you sold to cover your position, you're buying insurance to protect yourself from potential increased losses. So you're capping your max loss. Now a word of caution here. Let's go back to our Intel example. Let's say that you want to sell the $50 put option on Intel, but you don't want to have $5,000 of potential loss if the stock were to go to zero. Or maybe you're trading a smaller account and you don't want to risk that much money. As you can see here, for the October 16th put option, you could get about $1.33 per share if you go in the middle of the ask and the bid. Then you can buy yourself some insurance by buying the $47.5 put option and you would pay about $0.49 per share for that. So yes, your insurance does cost you some money, but instead of risking $50 per share, which would be $5,000 per contract, you're only risking $2.50 per share, which would be $250 per contract. That's a huge difference in the amount of risk that you're taking. Let's say you have a $2,500 account. Just because you're only risking $250 here, is it the right play to do 10 similar positions in which we're risking $250 per position? Or if you have 10 of those positions on, then you're risking the entire $2,500 on your 10 total positions? I don't think so. That's why an option trader that's using spreads needs to have self-control because you don't want to risk being wiped out of all 10 of your positions if the market moves against you like it did back in March. For example, in this Intel position, you could lose the entire $250 if Intel declines by only 5%. I'm a firm believer that if you have a small account, such as what we're describing here, it's a good idea to only have one trade on at a time. Make your profit in that trade, close that position out, and then open a new one. I think it's a terrible idea for a trader with a small account such as this to be risking 100% of their capital. Now let's look into debit spreads. The debit spread is the opposite of the credit spread. As we described earlier, if you think a stock is going to increase in value, then you could buy a call option that's closer to the money and sell another call option that's farther away from the money. Or if you think the stock is going to decline, then you could buy a put option that's closer to the money and sell a put option that's farther out of the money. Doing debit spreads presents several advantages. One of them, you know up front what your maximum loss is. Now you know that with a credit spread, but with a debit spread, you're actually coming out of pocket for that amount, so it's more real to you in my opinion. Let's take a look at this Intel example. There are several reasons why a person might be bullish on Intel. Remember that huge drop we spoke about that happened back in July? It left a big gap there. So if you believe, as many traders do, that gaps tend to get filled eventually, then you may think that there's a good chance that Intel will go up to fill this gap at some point in the future. Let's say you think that that could happen over the next four months. How could you use a debit spread to take advantage of this potential increase in stock price? 
Intel's currently trading just under $50 per share. If you look at our gap, it looks like the gap will be filled around $60 per share. So potentially we can buy a call option at around $50 per share and sell the $60 call option to help offset some of that cost. Well, what would be our overall cost for this position? Notice that we're looking at the January 21 options here. In the red rectangle, the $50 call option will cost us about $3.65. If we sell the same expiration date, $60 call option, we should be able to get around $0.84 cents per share. That means our overall out-of-pocket cost will be $2.81 per share. We have the potential to pocket the difference between these two strikes, or $10 per share. If Intel is above $60 by expiration, then our profit in this position will be $7.19 per share. But is this a smart trade based on volatility? Let's check it out. You see here in the blue rectangle at the top left corner that we're looking at the Intel January 21 $50 call option. Notice in the bottom right corner in the red rectangle that implied volatility is just over 33%. This matches the old saying that you should consider buying volatility when it's less than 50%. In this situation, if you feel like Intel has the potential to increase over the next four months, you could use a debit spread to try and capture that move. By using a spread instead of buying the $50 call option outright, you have the potential of a 256% return on this position if Intel ends up above the $60 strike price by January of 21. In options, implied volatility is an important factor to consider when you're using credit or debit spreads. As option traders, we obviously want to put the odds in our favor as much as possible. If you're willing to buy and sell options, it can be better to sell options or do credit spreads when volatility is higher than normal. However, when volatility is below average, your odds can potentially be better if you use debit spreads. But is this a one-size-fits-all strategy? Absolutely not. In just a moment, I'm going to share with you which strategy, credit or debit spreads, is my favorite and why. But if you're liking the video, why don't you do me a favor and tap that thumbs up button. It helps support the channel and it means a lot to me. And stay tuned in until the end because I'm going to share with you where you can find out more information on all of our exact trades as well as exactly how much we make monthly by using my favorite option trading strategies. If you've been watching this channel for any period of time, then you know that my favorite technique of option trading is to consistently put cash in my pocket. I've been trading long enough to know that I don't know what's going to happen in the market tomorrow. But I've learned over the years that it's always better to have cash in my pocket than to hope to have cash in my pocket in the future. That's why when it comes to option trading, I like to get paid no matter what's going on in the market. The way that I've been able to do that for many years consistently is by selling options. Every month, we put a wad of cash into our pockets by selling options. Using the strategies discussed in this video can produce excellent returns whether you're using debit or credit spreads. Selling options can generate awesome returns. When I sell put options, I'm selling them in stocks that have experienced some amount of decline or are stocks that I just feel really comfortable trading in and wouldn't mind owning if they got put into my account but I always want to receive nice cash flow by selling put options. On occasion, I do debit spreads. If you want to see how I do them, check out the video series on trading leap options. But predominantly, I'm an option seller. When I began trading options, I did a lot of spreads. Now that my account has grown in size, I stick mainly to selling naked put options or doing covered call options. Using this technique puts cash in my pocket every single month that I can live on, that I can reinvest, that I can pay for bills, that I can take a vacation with. I like selling options because I get cash up front put right into my bank account. I don't have to wait to see if I'm right on the stock movement or not. As a matter of fact, you'll see by watching some of my videos that sometimes when stocks move against me, I'm still able to put cash into my pocket and adjust the position to our favor. Selling options is my bread and butter and it has put tons of cash flow into my pocket over the years. Now at the beginning of this video, I told you I was going to share with you where you can find out exactly how much cash flow we generate by using my favorite strategy. I've made a series of videos on that exact subject. In those videos, I show you every single trade we did that month, discuss several trades that I believe can teach a lesson that can help you become a better, more profitable option trader, and show you exactly how much cash flow we received by buying and selling options that month. If you'd like to check it out, the link is above, and I'll put it down in the description below as well. That video series is entitled Option Trading Monthly Cash Flow. 
If you'd like daily information on our exact orders and trades, consider the benefits of becoming a patron in the link below. You'll be receiving some awesome information on a daily or weekly basis, whichever you choose, that you can use to become a better, more profitable option trader, all while supporting this channel. Check out the videos in the link above in the description below where I share with you my top secrets and tips on how to trade options like a pro. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.